Good evening, guys. Thank you for taking time to be with us tonight for our Wednesday night Bible study. If you have your Bible, I hope you'll please turn it over to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. If you'll remember, uh, we actually started on this chapter the week before Thanksgiving, and of course last week we were off. But today I would like to come back and pick up a little bit more of Romans chapter 5 for you and uh, introduce some of these verses to you. Now I know if you're like me, these are verses that you've read probably most of your life, and you've studied them time and time again. But I, my prayer is, is that the Lord will show us something here that we can uh, lay hold of, and not just lay hold of, but something that we can live out, and especially in the day in, in which we live. There's an awful lot of these verses, and uh, I had a fellow one time to ask me, and, you know, Brother Jeff, how is it that God's Word continually speaks to the newest age or the newest day or the newest generation or the newest circumstance or the nearest the newest uh, situation and and I think it's because it's a living word the Bible tells us that the word of God is quick and powerful and which means it's alive and sharper than any two-edged sword and is able to accomplish everything that it does and I'm paraphrasing there I know that but also the other thing that happens is the the Holy Spirit of God takes the Word of God to our hearts and reminds us of the things which we've studied and helps us to be at peace with some of the things that are going on around us. And sometimes, not just what's going on around us, but sometimes what's going on inside of us too. So if you've got your Bible open, we'll be in Romans chapter 5. I'm going to read uh, several verses tonight. I may just go ahead and read down to verse 11 and then come back up to my text. Uh, but then we'll look at our scriptures together for tonight. So the Bible says, Romans chapter 5 verse 1, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Now, if you remember my previous lesson on this, I didn't get past verse uh, 1 and 2 here. I just stayed in that because there was so much meat there on what justification is and what justification looks like in our lives. Where does it come from? How do we verify justification by faith? And that was what we've discovered. Paul wrote that in Romans chapter 4. Uh, and he comes back to and he gives us some splendid uh, examples of, in the Old Testament of that. You have Abraham. The Bible says that Abraham believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. David had the exact same praise. And this is, if you go, and this is also in Hebrews chapter 11, where they, their faith is what it helped them to be justified before God. And this, when you look at this, justification by faith is the message of the gospel of the grace of God that we preach today. The, the message is justification by faith, plus nothing, minus nothing. It's belief in Christ alone and in the finished works of Christ alone that helps us or enables us to be in a right relationship with God. It brings us into a state of reconciliation or a state of justification. I'm going to come to those terms again in a minute. But I want you to consider that for a second when we're talking about justification and realizing that that is our standing, okay? And it doesn't vary from week to week or day to day. And it doesn't go, come and go according to what our mood is or according to what our circumstances are. We are secure in Him, and He is at the right hand of God. Now, I'm not going to preach that message right now, but that's an exciting message too. Uh, the, Paul, I think it's in Ephesians or Philippians 1 where he says that we are, our life is hid with Christ in God and, and, and we are in Him in heaven and places this minute. I think I read some of that this past Sunday morning out of Ephesians chapter 2. But if you consider the, the justification and how we got it, we are justified by faith through our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? And then by whom we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. Now, I want to say this to you. God's offer to us is justification, okay? God's offer to us is redemption. God's offer to us is atonement, okay? God's offer to us is reconciliation, whereby He reconciles us to Himself by the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, okay? If I bring religious works to Him, that, and I'm not saying religious works in themselves are necessarily bad. I'm just saying religious works in themselves cannot save, Okay? If I bring moral standing, you know, I'm a moral person, I pay my bills, I do good things, I help poor people, I do whatever it is I do. If I bring that before God, and I'm not saying those things are bad either, don't, don't get that out of this, but I am saying those things don't lead to salvation. It's only justification, the only way justification happens 
is when a believing sinner places their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, is that person born again. It, listen, if God, and I'm re-preaching some of last Wednesday night and a little bit of this past Sunday morning too here right quick before I get to the next part of this. And, I, and I, when I get to the next part, you'll see why. This is the basis for everything else that follows here. Now, I have, I, and I've, I've pastored people for years and years, and I, I love to hear people get a hold of the Scriptures and start making application with the Bible. But I've seen people through the years actually claim the promises in Romans chapter 5, verses 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or on down to verse 11, while they're skipping verse 1 and 2, okay? We have to have justification by faith through grace. You have to have that beginning point to get to the next parts of this, all right? So, look the next part of this. And not only so, but we glo we'll notice at the end of verse 2, we rejoice in hope of the glory of God, okay? Now, this is a big change from Romans 3.23, where Paul tells us, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Remember that? And so here... We have hope in the glory of God, whereas before, Romans 3, before we were saved, we, were fall, we fell short of the glory of God and couldn't possibly get there on our own. So, And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation works patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope makes not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Now, I want to take a few minutes right here on these verses, and I may not get past here today, because there's a lot in this study. So go back up and look at this. So, Preacher Jeff, you're telling me if I've been justified by faith, then that word tribulation actually means pressure. It means to be squeezed on all sides. It means to have pressure sometimes from within. It means pressure from without. It means pressure from others. It means pressure from circumstances. It means pressure that just comes on our lives from about any direction pressure can come. Okay? Now, why is this important? Okay? And I want to say this to you. Who do you know nowadays that's not feeling a little bit of pressure? Okay? Who do we know? And I don't know very many people who aren't feeling the squeeze of things that are going on around them or within them or sometimes the things that we bring on ourselves or things that other people bring on us or our circumstances are what they are or guys I mean I think just living life in modern times is a pressure filled time I do I think that we have so many uh, things that come at us at such a rapid pace we we deal with so much information now we deal with so many different uh, differing views or different opinions and I'm not again not saying all of that's bad but I am saying it does bring an awful lot of pressure on us. I remember when, when I first started pastoring, I didn't have a cell phone. I had a um, pager. Did anybody else ever had a pager? I'm just telling you how old I am, all right? But that's what we had. We, that was what we had in the day. And then when you were home, you were sort of off unless you were like me and you had the church phone ringing at your house, okay, which I'm very glad to say we don't do that anymore because it was a lot of extra hours during the week that we would have to man or take care of the phone, the church phone and deal with the different calls that came in. Now, we do have ways for people to get in touch with us in an emergency, okay? We just don't get all the sales calls at whatever hours of the day and night that they used to come in, all right? A lot of pressure, and that, that's that word tribulation. That means the pressure times. It means, it means times of affliction. It means times when there's a lot of things going on within us and around us, okay? And can I show you this today? Justification by faith doesn't mean you get to dodge these, those times, okay? Justification by faith means that God, through the work of sanctification, and that's a word that scares Baptist people to death, but hang in here with me just for a second, all right? Justification is a one-time act whereby God declares us righteous in the righteousness of Jesus Christ, okay? The believing sinner is declared righteous because he places his faith and trust in Jesus Christ and, 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 and reconciles with God through the work of Jesus, all right? And it's one time. You don't get justified over and over. The Bible tells us in Hebrews that you couldn't be justified more than one time because justification to be bought one time was bought by the cross of the Lord Jesus. And if somebody was to seek justification twice, okay, that would mean Jesus would have to die twice. So we can only be justified one time, okay? But sanctification also comes now that we've been justified Sanctification starts in our life the moment we get saved, okay? So 
What does it mean that I've, now that I've been saved, now that I've been born again, now that I've regenerated, ever the words you want to put in there, that's up to you, okay? But the work that God does is that God now takes the circumstances that to us before were hopeless, okay? The circumstances that to us before we were helpless, okay? The circumstances that before we were we struggled with because there was no one to help or there was no one to come alongside. There was nobody to speak peace to us. There was nobody to speak grace to us. There was nobody to, to help us have mercy in our lives. Okay. When we came to know Jesus Christ, all of those things started flowing into our lives according to the measure that God does that. Okay. But with this. Life still happens to us, okay? We still grieve the loss of a loved one, okay? We still have the anxiety about finances, okay? We still have the anxiety of child raising. We still have the, uh, the pressures of trying to be a good boss or a good employee or whatever the pressure may be, a good neighbor or a good friend. I mean, all of these things are pressures, and then the, the societal pressures come too, and those things come on us, and they, they try to get us to conform to what's going on around us and try to get us to, and I got to say this to you, as a Christian, the, the Bible tells us, Romans chapter 12, that we should not be conformed to this world, okay, but we should be transformed by the renewing of our minds, okay, and, and, and what does that look like to be transformed by the renewing of our minds? Is it the removal of the pressures? Is it the removal of the, the, the tr times of trouble? And the answer is no, okay. Now, okay, and this is in Romans chapter 8 too. I told you I was going to have a long way to go today. We're not going to get past this. Now then, the Holy Spirit of God takes that which used to crush us and strengthens us with that, okay? Now, the Holy Spirit of God with the Word of God and the people of God, okay, takes that which we would not have gotten through by ourselves, and now then God bears us through that. God helps us come through those things. God gives us grace. God gives us mercy. God gives us fellowship. God gives us support. God gives us all of those things now that helps us get through that which would have been unimaginable to get through without Him. Okay? That's the work of sanctification. Okay? And, and here's the other part of this. Okay? God takes those things, look at this in verse 3, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation works patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. Now, I want to stop here a second because this leads to God takes those things, and that word patience means perseverance, okay? It means that God brings us through those things, and we learn that we can trust His timing, okay? Can I tell you when I want God to answer my prayers? Right before I pray them. I'm, I'm just being honest. Can I tell you when I want God to get me out of a hard circumstance uh, now? Yeah, and i got to be honest with you. If I'm not careful, I will, I will help people get out of a circumstance that God has been trying to get them to go through. I, I do that sometimes. And the Lord says, I've been working on trying to get them there for a long time. And now you're going to go bail them out and talk them out of it. Out of it all right. But God uses a time of pressure. God uses a, a time of affliction. God uses a time of uncertainty. God uses the external forces around us. God uses the people around us. God uses what's going on even within us, okay? God takes these things and produces, look at this. So we, we look at tribulation. Tribulation works or tribulation produces perseverance or patience, okay? i got to say this to you. There's an awful lot of Christianity today that has not figured out perseverance. Has not figured out perseverance. Okay, we, Lord of mercy, we, and please don't be offended at this, but we've got the attention span of a gnat. I mean, we, Lord of mercy, we, we and if God ain't worked it out in the first five minutes, we, we're on to the next thing. Or if we, everything's got to be rapid, everything's got to be exactly like I wanted. I mean, he's God, he knows what I want, he knows what I need, and he knows I need it right now, you know, that type of thing. And as we grow and as we go through different circumstances, we find out that He is God and we are not, okay? And His timetable doesn't look like our timetable. And His purposes being worked out in our lives look different than the purposes we would work out for ourselves, all right? So 
Tribulation works patience. It produces that. It bears the fruit of patience in our life, which is perseverance. And then look what happens with patience. Patience leads to experience, okay? It's something you've experienced or something that, and there's a lot of people who operate on the theory of things, okay? For instance, for me, I am not, everybody who knows me knows, I am electrically, electrically, <laughs> electrically challenged. I can't even say it, all right? If I work on something with electricity in it, I get electrocuted every time, okay? I, you know, if somebody said, well, just turn off the breaker. It doesn't matter. I mean, we turn off the power to the whole house. I, Jeff's going to get electrocuted before everything is said and done, all right? And here's what I know I've experienced. I don't, have, I don't have the first idea about the theory of electricity. If I studied the theory, I might not be electrocuted quite so readily, all right? But my experience of electricity is practical, okay? And it doesn't matter. I can have one of the best screwdrivers you have ever seen in your life with a rubber handle, and it can say Klein tools on it, and I can have the cutters that say Klein, and it's got all of those different things that you can strip the wire to whatever. It doesn't, look, it doesn't matter. I can, I can buy hundreds of rolls of that, that the electrical tape and wrap something in. It doesn't matter. I, Jeff is going to get electrocuted. Now, and here's what I'm saying, okay? There are some things, there are people who, who live on the theory of things, all right? But guys, God's not just interested in us knowing the theory, okay? God wants us to live things out practically, okay? So when you look at this, this experience is not just something we've learned, but something we've lived, okay? It's something that God has brought us through. It's something that God has helped us overcome, okay? It's something that God has demonstrated His faithfulness to us, and we've experienced the grace and the fullness and the mercy of God in a real way. Now, and hear this, okay? I, and I'm, I've got to teach this for a minute. This is an, a really important part of this. The closer we get to the coming of the Lord, the more of this we're going to need. And we are living in those times. We are living in those times. Goodness gracious. I, if I had time to preach on that tonight, man, what a great study that would be. But as we get closer to the coming of the Lord, the more pressure is going to get on us. Okay, the more the push to conform is going to get real to us. The more we're going to experience pressure from without, within, from those around us, circumstances, wherever that's coming from, that's going to get more and more intense as we go along. And I'm not saying that to make you more nervous, okay? And I'm certainly not saying that to help you be more anxious about things. I'm trying to help you understand where we go with anxiety, okay, and what God does with those things, okay? God takes those things, those pressures, and if we'll trust Him, okay, and if we will seek Him, and if we will ask Him what we're supposed to look like, and if we'll ask him what we're supposed to be doing, and if we'll let him mold us according to his will, okay, God takes all of those things, okay, that would make a mess out of our life if he were not with us, okay? God takes those things that would make a wreck out of us, period, if he were not captain of our ship, okay? God takes those things and makes beautiful things out of them. God takes the, the shipwreck of a story and turns it into a story that's a blessing to the person who went through it and, and a, a certainly a, a testimony to those around them. And then it also brings glory to God at the end of the day. I mean, God is able to do that in our lives. Okay, and then that's where this comes in. So you have you, tribulation works patience and patience experience. And what does experience produce? Okay, hope. It produces hope. Christian, i got to be honest with you. I think we're living in a time of, of great hopelessness for a lot of people who are believers. We, Lord help us, we, we, we are thinking, and don't, I'm not trying to have a holy war tonight. I just want to teach this lesson. There are people who are sure that our hope is bound up in this political party, that political party, this president, that president, this platform, that platform. And, and we... As Christians, do I have a preference for how I want that to go? Well, absolutely, you know I do. And if you know me at all, you know how I voted. You know where I stand. There's no question of that, all right? But guys, this word hope is a hope that is reserved for, for what God has done. We, we've learned that we can trust Him. We've learned 
that he won't send anything to us that he won't help us go through. Now, forever and ever, I've heard people say, and if you say this, I, I'm not trying to hurt your feelings, but here comes the hook, okay? We go around saying, God won't put more on us than we can bear. I understand that sentiment. I just want to say that's not an exact theological truth. God regularly loads us up with things that we can't bear. God regularly lets us go into storms that we have to go and say, Lord, help us. I mean, think about it like this. When the disciples were with Jesus, every time, it looks like about every time they got on a boat in the four Gospels, there was a storm that came up and just nearly drowned all of them, and they just all nearly died. And what did they finally do? Okay, somebody went and woke up Jesus and said, Master, we perish. And so he had to get up and speak peace to the storm. He had to help them get through it. Guys, those were fishermen who had fished the Sea of Galilee their whole life. They knew that lake like the back of their hands, okay? They, they did, and then when they got in those circumstances, though, they, it was over their head. It was more than they could do, and what did they do? They went and got Jesus and said, Lord, help us. All right, and I'm going to say this to you today. Maybe you need to go get Jesus. Maybe you're trying to sort this out on your own. Maybe you're trying to make sense of things without him. And I want to say today, that is a wasted, that Lord, what an empty exercise if you're trying to come up with the answers that you need outside of him or God and God's word. We have hope, and man, hear this, because God has answered our prayers and we've experienced God's answers. We have hope because we've experienced God's deliverance, okay? How do I preach forgiveness to you guys, you know, week after week? And I try my very best to make sure that we preach forgiveness and mercy and grace and, and the truth of God's Word to our people regularly. And why do I unashamedly stand up here and say God forgives, okay? It's because He's forgiven me. I have experienced the forgiveness of God. I have experienced the mercy of God. I have experienced the grace of God. I have experienced God's provision. I've experienced God's deliverance. I've, seen, I've experienced God's direction. I've experienced these things. And, and when I go into a new circumstance or I look into a new uh, thing that's coming into our life or into, my, into our world or into our, 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 our area of, uh, of influence or experience and I see something coming, I've learned, and I'm, I'm, I'm slow to do this sometimes. I don't get this right every time. I wish I did. I'm not preaching it as an as a expert today. I'm preaching this as somebody who's learning this lesson too, okay? I will go through a circumstance or a storm or a situation in my life and not remember Romans 8, 28 until I'm just about done through, done through most of it. And I know that's not properly said, but you know what I mean. I will go all the way, most of the way through a circumstance or a storm and trying to work it out on my own, and I'll be doing everything I can. And it reminds me of those disciples trying to get that boat to come to shore when Jesus had to walk out to them in the fourth watch of the night. Tribulation, we glory in tribulations. That's a very mature Christian that can look into those circumstances and say, you know what, guys? This is going to work out for our good and God's glory. This is going to work out for our good and His glory. God is going to take what man meant for evil and make something good out of it. God is going to take what Satan meant for destruction and make something good out of it. God is going to take what we've done and turn that around and make something good out of it. We... We learn that by experience. And I want to say this to you today. There is no substitute by experience. And I want to say too, thank God. We have, a, we have hope. Look at the next part, verse 5. And hope makes not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. Now I love this and I'm going to finish here. You go through those times, the Bible, and it's even when we go under the chastening of God, and that's in Hebrews chapter 13, that there's no chastening that is pleasant at the present time. And while you're going through a time of chastening, that's unpleasant. That's a hard spot to be in. Now, and I want to say this to you, the Bible in Hebrews 12 and 13 tells us that if we live a life that never has chastisement in it, that we're not children of God, okay? 
Guys, every child born to God goes through cha- times of chastening, times of correction, okay? No chastisement while we're going through it is pleasant, the Bible says, but the end result is there's a peace, there's a, there's a recovery, there's an understanding, there's, there's a clarity that we get, there's, there's the revelation that God was in this from the beginning. God was working through this circumstance to work out for our lives. Sometimes our lives wind up with a very terrible bent to it and God has to work on it. Sometimes our lives wind up with a direction that we don't need and God has to deal with that. Or sometimes in our lives we wind up with a really hardened heart or a bad attitude or whatever it is. And God, okay, now somebody said, preacher, a saved person won't have those things. I, I, can I just ask you a question? Have you read the Bible? <laughs> Have you looked at the scriptures? I mean, I, I read through my Bible and I see all of those things in God's people and not just in the Old Testament. It's through the New Testament too. Over and over and over again, God's people wind up with a, a bad approach or a bad bent or a bad attitude or a bad heart set or a bad mindset about things and God has to show them that. And, and, but guys, here's the promise. The pressure, the, the tribulation leads to patience, leads to experience, leads to hope, okay? And hope makes not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Now, I'm going to preach on this just for a minute. I'm going to finish here. As a pastor, it has been my privilege and I, it is a privilege to me that God would put me in circumstances with people in times that are sometimes in the ministry. We there's a saying that we have: we get to see people at their at their happiest moments, and then at their saddest moments. I mean, we we get to be a part of both of those, and and I'm thankful for that. Thank God, the Bible says that we should uh, rejoice with those that rejoice and weep with those that weep. I mean, so we we get to do both of those things with our people and we get to experience those things in the life as a church we get to experience those things together right and guys i've seen people go through things that were just absolutely crushing and just absolutely too heavy to bear and i would look at them and i would go how in the world are they getting through that how in the world are they getting are they making their way through that? How do they have a smile? I mean the tears, yes, okay. But how does that person have joy in the middle of that? How does that person have peace in the middle of that? And it's not because of something that I know how to do or something I can do or say for people, it's the you ready? It's it's the work of the Holy Ghost that speaks peace. And the love of God is shed abroad in that heart. Just recently in our church family, we've had a family that went through a, a terrible loss. And just um, after a hard season of suffering, somebody passed. And way too early, way too young. Um, way too early, in my mind. And I know in God's timing and God's will, and I, I get that. But I wondered if there would, if there would be joy. If there would be, how could there be peace after that how could there be hope after that and then I watched and I watched the Holy Spirit bear those people up and he answered prayers and he the Holy Spirit spoke peace God opened doors God closed doors God did the work that only God could do God Christian, we need this today. We need the understanding that God, through the work of sanctification in our lives, and that's the process I've just been explaining to you. God, through the work and the process of sanctification, takes all that pressure, all of that, the pushing, all of those things that come to us, all of those things that wear on us, all of those things that, that, that bear us down, that weight us down, Okay. We don't escape them. Okay. God turns those things around and he uses them for our good. He makes better Christians out of us. 
He makes somebody who's more like Jesus out of us. He makes somebody who has a more tender heart out of us. He makes somebody who has better sense out of us. God does those things for our good. And God also does those things for His glory. Hallelujah. God takes that which is hopeless and out of that the Holy Ghost, through shedding abroad the love of the Lord Jesus in our hearts, there's hope, there's joy unspeakable and full of glory. There's peace that passes all understanding. There's a clarity that wouldn't come any other way. God turns those things around and does the most amazing things with them. So here's my prayer for you. And I'm going to stop right here. I'm not going to go to the next parts of this. An unsaved person cannot claim these blessings we just claimed. They can't do it. They don't have the work of the Holy Spirit in their life. They don't have the standing with God to claim these things from God. That's why justification is so important. That's why being reconciled to God through Jesus Christ is so vital. Out of our relationship with God, out of our, our place with God, our standing with God, God uses this process and it produces hope and it produces the love of God being shed abroad in our hearts. Do you see that? I hope that you do. Listen, thank you for taking time to be with us tonight. I'm going to stop right here. I want to just have a quick prayer and then we'll be dismissed. But thank you and I look forward to you being with us on Sunday if you can. Uh, and if you can't be here in person, we hope you'll participate online. But thank you for taking time out for tonight's Bible study. Let's pray together, and I'll let you go. Father, thank you for the truth that's in your word. Lord, thank you that we can know you. Lord, I don't just have to know about you. I, I have relationship with you. Lord, I, I have relationship that... It's more than just a way to get me to heaven. Lord, it's more than just a way to keep me out of a troubled life. Father, it's a salvation that reaches all the areas of my life. And it impacts everything within me, everything around me. Lord, you are such a gracious God to make a way into our lives with such grace and such mercy. I pray tonight, Lord, for the person that will hear this lesson, that, Father, you would speak as only you can. And Lord, I pray tonight that you would help us to understand your process and, Lord, what you're doing in our lives. And Lord, that we would submit ourselves to your will. We fully admit our need for you tonight, and, Lord, we ask you to come and have your way. And We'll thank you and praise you for all that you do. We ask it tonight in Jesus' name. Guys, thank you for your time. I hope you have a good rest of your week. And if you've enjoyed this lesson, we hope you'll take time and share it with your friends and maybe with somebody else who might be going through a hard place or through a storm. And uh, I look forward to seeing you again on Sunday morning. Hope you have a good night.